Fuck, this movie is awesome. <laughs> Rogue One, A Star Wars Story is the latest chapter into this Lucasfilm cinematic universe now that we've started since Disney purchased them. We had The Force Awakens last year. This year we have Rogue One. And, you know, it's crazy now that we're... I, I was anticipating with The Force Awakens a year ago, and now we're already in the second chapter. As of now, we are officially in the road to Episode Eight. Once people have seen Rogue One, you know, Thursday, Friday showings, we have commenced the road to that, and I can't wait to see that. But right now, we're in Rogue One. Spotlight is in Rogue One. You know, with the trailers, with, you know, I wasn't worried about reshoots. I know what reshoots are. I'm not a dumbass. But, you know, with the trailers that I got with the films, we were promised a war film. And with those trailers, they were consistent, at least. It felt like a war film. And, uh, you know, I was wondering, like, you know, can this be a successful prequel? Because I love the prequels, yeah. But, you know, unanimously, can this be a successful prequel? And, you know, how much screen time are we going to get Darth Vader? You know, are we going to love these characters? You know, are they going to be throwaways? Or are we going to be characters that are going to be memorable, at least? And, and then, you know, once I saw this movie, like, oh my goodness, it was really incredible. I just loved the story. I loved the characters. I latched onto them so quick. Uh, gender so especially was fleshed out so well you know you understood like what went on and you know with Galen Ursel you know being involved with this Death Star you know it really gave it like a character and it, it made you realize you know how you know powerful the, the Death Star is and how vulnerable it could get and this family felt like like we had the Skywalker family but this Ursel family felt very essential to Rogue One and you know whether it's the young actress or um, Felicity Jones, they did both well as Jen. They sold it, you know. The little girl's adorable, but when she becomes Felicity Jones, she kicks ass. She can stand on her own. She's a character kind of similar to Rey, at least in the aspects where she can kick ass, but she's still a different character. And I just love that, you know. She she could be a nice, caring person. She's nice. It shows it. But when she needs to get tough and dirty, she shows it. She is just a character that, you know. They fleshed so well for this story and it shows why we needed her to, you know, just assemble the squad and try to get those Death Star plans. And Cassian Andor, I was surprised with Cassian Andor. I knew Diego Luna's an incredible actor. He's a good actor, especially in Mexico. But, you know, seeing him here, it's just great to get him some notoriety, get him to shine more. And I love his character. I like the like layers he has. And the thing I liked so much, he represented the rebellion also. He represented that the rebellion is not always this nice, you know. Like, they're not, like, just happy-go heroes or whatever. Like, they save the world. Like, you know, no, they have a gray area. They have sometimes lines that they have to step to, you know, for the better good. And I love seeing how the rebellion was represented. And he was a great representation of it. And, you know, you get some meat also to his story. You know, you realize that, you know, he's not heartless, cold-hearted person. He's a person... That has responsibilities also. That needed to do, you know, things that he does to, you know, get the message out. Donnie and his awesome also as Chirrut. He kicks ass. His, you know, his uh, little, his partner, Baze Melvis, they both worked as a great team. You know, I kind of wish why they were stick together. You know, I want to know more about them. But their friendship, their friendship makes up for any maybe background that wasn't, you know, shown for them. But their friendship just kick ass. I love seeing them as friends, you know. It brings me so joy. They have a chemistry that's just, you know, you can tell it feels real. K2SO, my God, K2SO is a joy that he is so great. He's like, he has like those C3PO-isms of like how, you know, he's programmed. But he knows that this is all like programming. I mean, he kind of like, he's a little bit satirical of how he is. He kind of jokes around with it. He, he also is a realist of like, you know, why, who he is, but realizes that, you know, that's just the program and he kind of goes off sometimes and it's just the character that you know it's a robot but they brought so much like human character and Alan Tudor did a good job voicing him I just it was just a robot that he worked so well off of Kazi and Andor kind of felt like Terminator with them like that chemistry that they had and you guys man the the third act you know the third act was so incredible I just love it it was great getting space battles again, like something like Return of the Jedi. I kind of got the vibes from that. It felt good seeing how this technology from like A New Hope style is now improved into this era of where we live at with films. I wanted to see something like that. I'm glad I got something like that. And then Orson Krennic. Orson Krennic, they've got a really good villain that 
was, you know, he was relatable. He wanted to get things done. He they gave him some kind of like character tube where, you know, you know, he wasn't just really one dimensional. They really gave him like a reason like, you know, how he he's had friends and, you know, he needs to do this to try to go up the ranks. Okay, you guys want to know then how Vader was. Vader Oof, this is not a spoiler guys because you know you've seen him in the trailers but Darth Vader when he shows up he shows up incredibly oh my goodness it was worth seeing him back it's great seeing him first time since Revenge of the Sith but the Darth Vader that we love since you know Return of the Jedi you know this is why probably Kyle Ren worships and you know this is grandfather that I can understand he would idolize and he's just a force to be reckoned with he's got some ugh, some horror chilling moments and I'm not going to ruin just the length of how many minutes he's in, you know, whether I say it would be like 30 minutes, whether it be five minutes, I'm not ruining anything because to me, sometimes when someone tells me how many scenes someone had or how many minutes, that kind of ruins it for me too. And I hate that. So I'm going to save that for those that watch this review. But when he makes, when he appears, his presence is well known. It was great. You know, I liked the, how kind of felt like Magnificent Seven kind of esque, and then, you know, it turned into like. You know, the Star Wars movie that we loved. I like these band of misfits that just came together, you know. I kind of wish I would have seen a little bit more fleshed out of all of them. But they're just like... A, like, kind of basis of how the team has worked, worked so well, you know. The chemistry, you feel like they're at least friends. And it's just great. Even Saw Guerrero had a purpose. He wasn't just a person they needed to visit. He had a really good purpose of why he was, you know, in incorporated to the story. And, you know... Whether it was the characters, you know, you see throughout the whole, you know, movie or some that just probably pop in and out, you know, you have some kind of like emotion to them. You, you, you understand them and they work them out in a way where they serve purpose to the film. It's just great seeing familiar faces again. The new characters I was really invested. In. Yeah, really, I just have some probably nitpicks and it's just character developments that I really want to see more. So I'm going to have to give Rogue One a Star Wars story an A+. Now let me know guys what you thought in the comments below. You know, if you've seen already Rogue One and Star Wars 3, where, where do you guys rank this? I know it's a spin-off. You really don't shouldn't rank it with the saga films. But you know what? You know, let's just rank them. Who cares? It's a celebration of Star Wars. You know, where'd you rank this with 4, 5, 6, and 7? You know, and did it connect well with you with episode 3 and 4? And how did it tie in for you guys for 4? All this in the comments below. And as always, Roland Empire, laugh, smile, repeat.